Hi viewers, this is Sir Gandesha. This is Sir Patani. And today we are here with Zafar Ali Khan. And we were going to discuss the pre-release material for all of the computer science May June 2019. So this uh, pre-release material is about uh, a marketplace mm -hmm. where seller and buyers uh, get together in order to sell their items and buyers are there to bid for it. This is uh, unlike any uh, shop where there are prices fixed. Over here, seller brings in their products and they uh, ask for a reserve price and then for the whole day, buyers bid for it. Buyers do not know what is the reserve price. That is the uh, point here that buyers only bid for uh, the product if they like it and they cannot bid for the product uh, for the price lesser than the previous highest bid. Initially, all of the bids will be zero. So let us start uh, with the... Uh, with task one? With, no, no, not task one actually. We will start with the visualization of the okay. whole task and then we will read it out and we will discuss it. Okay, great. So it's like... Uh, We have got three tasks. Task one is about sellers. Okay. Task two is about buyers. And task three is about the marketplace itself. Okay. So it's like at the start of the day, sellers arrive with their items to be sold with a price fixed for their own item. And they are then assigned an item number okay. by the marketplace. All right. So that their item could be recognized with that item number. And item numbers are assigned by the marketplace because uh, uh, no two or more items have mm -hmm. the same item same number. Item. They, so have to be, they have to be unique. Yeah, they have to be unique. Item they numbers have, have to, to be, be unique. unique. Yeah, yeah. So first thing we need to understand is that whenever CIE mm -hmm. uh, makes these pre-release material, they make it with the console mode. Okay. in their mind. Console mode is like a uh, non-graphical user interface where we have to enter everything over okay. the console. The black screen that we uh, we are looking at. Yes, looking at. we are okay. looking at. We are looking at. So, uh, for initial time we have uh, thought that there are just 10 items because they said okay, we have to set up the whole thing for at least 10 items. At least 10, 10, 10 items. items. And we will discuss about it. Why do we have to have a constant resolve later, at later stage when okay. we will be technically discussing it. So let's see. We have to enter an item number. For the sake of ease, let's uh, make item number 1, item description 8 and item reserve price 10. And okay. subsequently item number 2 and uh, description B and reserve price 20 and then we will go on to set up these 10 items. Uh, meanwhile you can ask questions. Yeah. Item number 1, item description A and item reserve price are 10. Item number 2, um, description is B and price is 20. Okay. Now since these item numbers are being allocated by the marketplace. Okay. They have to be unique. They have to be unique. Yeah. So let's uh, try that. Um, we already have two items in the list okay. with the uh, item number one, one and two. And two. And two. Okay. So let's enter two again. It would not let you go any further, and it will keep asking. Keep if this asking is validation you. check, existence yeah. check. All right. Okay. Whenever you enter a value, it checks the whole. Okay. Record. If there is uh, another item with that already entered, mm -hmm. it won't allow you. So okay. it will keep asking. Let's say if I enter item what number one, it will still be asking for it. So given. yeah. So let's enter three. As soon as we enter three, it accepts it and asks for the description. So three C. So this thirty. Is, this is a uniqueness check that we were talking. Yeah, about. uniqueness check is existence check. As soon as we input an item number, right. it checks the whole array about it, okay. and if it already exists. It does not allow enter to uh, okay. have that item number okay. and we have to change Get that it. item number. Yeah. So item number 4, D40. Item number 5, E50. Five. Item six. number 6, Let's make it F. F60. Seven. Seven. G70, 
8H80 9I90 and 10J100 so this is our task, task one, one. <coughs> there are few things which are happening in the background okay. let's not discuss about it until we uh, reach to it uh, look technically look at the and the, the, yeah. the visual yeah. basic production All right. so task one requires us to set up the marketplace okay. sellers bring in their products they are being assigned the item number item okay. number should be unique and they are actually entering the description okay. alongside their reserve price Okay, so according to sir, I just want to ask you, in, uh, in this scenario we have uh, fixed 10 items, like we can increase it in future or it could, could be hours in CIE. Yeah. Right? Uh, there are two things about it. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, most of the solutions are made this way that uh, first of all, user is asked that how many items are there oh, and yeah, then, there. then a very uh, array is being created about it. Okay. And, uh, then we are uh, actually running all the loops for that number of items. Mm -hmm. okay. The thing is, uh, such practice is never asked in CIE's previous papers. Okay. 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 So what actually happens by this, what I understand is that okay. we have to make a constant. And then we will use that okay. constant throughout the program. Okay. That constant would be the number of uh, products. That okay. constant would be to declare array. That constant would be to have a limit validation check okay. and that constant would be to have for next loop as many times. So it's, it's mean that you will be going to start, uh, you will be going to declare a constant at the At the start, the at the start the and there are 15 places where we will be using so that constant. Even if they were going to change yeah. the value for the number of items, the yeah. uh, student only have to change that number. For example, it's item number number of item is the constant. constant so they will only going to change the value like 10 to 15 or 20 whatever yeah. the every time there is a difference in uh, requirement we will open up our code and change the constant okay Achha, there is one more thing uh, such practices like that you are inputting the number of items and then you are creating array for that number of items okay is actually not uh, correct from CI's point of view mm -hmm. what actually happens to what we have uh, as of yet uh, practice always mm -hmm. that arrays should be of a constant size okay. and arrays cannot be declared for their upper bound from another variable. another variable so lower bound and upper bound should both be the constants okay all right, all right. so if you want to change the number of items okay. or the size of the array you would have to set up a constant and constant cannot be taken as input all right. All right. So we are it not going to declared. use a variable. Okay. It should be declared at the top. Yeah, no. yes. Okay. yes. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So uh, this this is about the discussion of the task one. The the visual. Yeah. Visual understanding. understanding. Let's start with task two now. Let's start start with the visual understanding of task two. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which is the buyer's debt? Now this task two is from. Uh, buyer's point of view. Buyer knows that how many items are there since they are being uh, displayed on interactive board okay. mm -hmm. but they don't know what is the reserve price. Yep. So they want to bid for any item what they would do they will enter the value of that item. Okay. I mean the item number okay. of that item. So let's say someone likes to bid for item number four. four. As soon as they enter the ID I the item number uh, they will be uh, given the item number, the, the description, description and the current highest, highest bid. As per the requirement of okay. task 1, all of the highest bids were initially set to zero. 0 as well as the number of bids were set to 0. That okay. is part of uh, the technical discussion later. So, the information about that item is given now. Okay. So, they are being asked if they want to bid for this item. Okay. So, if they say yes, they want to bid for this item, they will be first asked for their buyer number. Okay. Now, okay. buyer number. Buyer number. So, sir, sir, I just want to ask you that uh, buyer number should be unique. Yeah, buyer number is unique in terms of national ID. It's not unique in terms of item number. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, it is written at the end of uh, task number. Task number two. two. Yeah. Task number two that uh, buyers can bid for an items many, many items. times and they can, and they can bid for many, many items. items. If that is the case and we make this buyer number unique as we have made it in 
item number okay. then it will become impossible for one buyer to bid many times for the same product or number of products okay. so this is the responsibility of buyer himself to enter the number which belongs to him okay. rather than um, uh, relying on someone else so yes. that uniqueness here is not in terms of existence check Unique, okay. uniqueness is uh, in terms of Let's not put a number which does not belong to you. Okay, fine. All right. So, so we would not have any check for it. Buyer's responsibility to input his uh, unique ID by unique, himself. Yeah, by himself. But that unique ID should not be unique in the program it because if be. that if we make it unique in the program, we so won't be able to bid for many the items many or the items. same item many okay, number. Okay. Okay. So we don't have to include the uniqueness check for the buyer. Yes. Yeah, so no this existence is a very check. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. 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 So. We enter buyer number which is let's say 123 and then they are presented with the message that current highest bid for this item is zero. Okay. Enter your bid amount. So let's, uh, uh, this is uh, item number four. So let's bid for like let's say 28. So thanks, your bid is updated. Mm. Since the last highest bid was uh, zero, okay. 28 is happily accepted. Do you want to place uh, another bid for another item? Let's say yes, I want to and then let's bid for the same item this time when the data is shown current highest bid is already shown 28 okay. so let's bid for it with less price so let's check if the validation check works or not. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, enter buyer number let's say 123 if I am bidding for the same item okay had that buyer number been unique okay. I would never be able to bid for the same item again so since I am inputting my buyer number as I input over here, same. I should be allowed to do that. Okay. So uniqueness check does not should actually not fit in here. Okay. 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 So same buyer number, current highest bid is 28. So let's uh, bid for 20 rupees. So it would not allow. It says that your bid is unacceptable as it is less than less current than highest bid. Aspect. So if okay. we are bidding, we should bid for more than, more than 20. Than because it's the All right, so let's, yeah. so let's yeah. bid for 35 rupees. So thanks, your bid is updated. Do you want to place another bid? Let's say no. And then as a separate buyer, let's choose task two once again. And now let's bid for item number eight. eight. All right, so let's bid for it. And uh, let's bid for it, let's say with 90 rupees. Okay. Sorry, uh, 345 buyer number and with 90 rupees. Your bid is accepted. I don't want to bid anymore. So that's about uh, task two. Task two. So task, task two. Task two is actually about buyers. Okay. Buyers will be bidding for the whole day. Okay. And uh, at the end of the day, task three starts. As I said, that task number one is for sellers. Task number two is for buyers, and task number three is for the market. The marketplace itself. Task number. Three is about the marketplace, about its stats, that what have been done throughout the day. Okay. How many bids were placed, for which item bids were placed, mm -hmm. in which item the bid crossed the reserve price, okay. and uh, ultimately what they have made out of uh, the items those were sold. Okay. Item sold check is like the highest bid price should be greater than the reserve price. Okay. Already we know that uh, buyer do not know buyers they There's don't know about the reserve price, the reserve price. Okay. so if any of the highest bid mm. went higher than the reserve price that would be considered as sold so, okay so let's see so we again now we're going to have the visual representation of the task, task number three. three okay so task three the first thing they ask for is item sold so okay. item number eight is sold reserve price were 80, 80. highest bid was 90, 90. And uh, this marketplace will be uh, taking 10% of the highest bid as their own uh, facilitation money. Okay. So these are their charges. Will they going to charge that 10% fee uh, from the uh, seller or from the buyer? Buyer perspective. Like from the seller. From the seller. From the seller. But that is not part of our. Um, okay. Okay. I just, I just want to ask another okay. question that uh, we have to calculate the final bid. Okay. Like 10% of any product that, that we have sold, 
but uh, for all the items but for or, or only individual items we have to no calculate. we have to calculate it for all the items those were sold okay. but it will be summed up it okay. will be total and it will be shown like that since okay. we have just one item sold over here right. so let's sell another item let's sell another item let's say item number six okay and uh, we purchase it for let's say by this is 476 this is buyer number and we bid for 70 all right now we can run task 3 task 3 okay in task 3 you see now two items are sold and their total fee total is being shown so rupees 7 from item number 6 and rupees 9 from item number Eight huh? and collectively they are being shown over here that that sixteen rupees were made by the marketplace itself. So okay. all the items that have been sold. Yeah, okay. all of the items. Perfect. This is what they have asked for. Yeah. Now, second thing after item sold is item not reached the reserve price means all those items which were bid for or which were not, mm -hmm. but they never crossed the reserve, reserve price. So we can see that item number one two three which we never bid for but we bid for item number four and the final bid the highest bid was 35 but it could not cross the reserve price so it is being shown over here and then uh, items that have no bids in a way that there are so many things so many items in the marketplace only a few are being bid for and were sold and rest were not okay, so uh, we have to show over here that which were not like, yes. uh, do we have to show all the items with which does not, because right now uh, what I'm just looking at, that we can see all the items either with the, okay, I get it. Like these all items does not are those cross which the with, price. Yeah, yeah. There's a number of items that they does not cross the. Those those who have crossed are sold. Okay. Those which could not, cross either they were bid or not. Yeah. Okay. Say either they were bid or not. No, yeah. Okay. And the third one is items those were never bid for. Never bid for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was you know worrying about those zeros, but uh, I get it now. They never reach the reserve they never, prices. They never. Uh, Whether bid for or not, they never. Okay. Yeah. Get it. Get it. All right. So never bid for. And the fourth one is number of items not sold. Okay. Only two got sold, which so are two. being shown over here. Number six and item okay. number eight. And uh, number of items that did not meet the reserve price, those are eight. And All right. Number of items with no bids is seven. Yeah. I, see items not price. reached the reserve price and yeah, number of items that did not meet the reserve price. They have yeah. asked for both of it, but this should be same. They should be same, absolutely. Yeah. Number of items with no bids. So actually, they are being shown over here and they are being counted over here. Great. All, All right. right. So this is the visualization of the. Task, uh, three. Three. task three. The marketplace at the end of the auction. Yeah. The auction. Okay. yeah. So once user have a good idea of how this program would work, mm -hmm. they will be able to grasp the whole uh, idea easily when we are talking how in terms of technical and programming, programming environment. This is the ending of the visual understanding of the pre-release material. So stay tuned and uh, the technical uh, uh, understanding of the PRM is coming soon. Thanks, thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.